Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Monday, July 3rd, 2017 edition of VR News. Let's jump right into it. Hope you guys are having a good start to the work week. First news story concerning a game called The Wizards. Now, I'm not going to rehash the whole Spidey thing, but yesterday I did mention that his superpower seemed very well suited to virtual reality. This game, The Wizards, is a spellcasting game like The Unspoken, and I think that, even more than Spidey's superpowers, are even better suited to VR. The current state of VR with the touch controllers, the Vive wands, well, that's exactly the type of gestures and control needed in spellcasting. So, yeah, I don't care if there's a dozen more spellcasting games. As long as they're good and they bring something unique to the table, I'll try them because I think it's a mechanic that, you know, is just going to excel with where VR is at right now. Clearly inspired by the unspoken if you look at it, right? Uh, but again, hopefully brings its own special something to the table. We will find out July 28th. That's when they launch into early access uh, both platforms. So you're going to be able to get this Steam VR for Rift and Vive or just via Oculus Home for your Rift. Second news story, also game related, this time table tennis game Racket Fury, which looks really polished, is another one of those games where I say I hope the gameplay matches the graphics because the graphics do look good. The menu, everything looks well thought out and Upload VR, they've got a YouTube video specifically for this game. It's in the description below. You can check it out. It just, it looks like fun. It looks like the type of game even if you're not a table tennis fan, and let's face it, table tennis is one of those games, it can take a lifetime to never master, but it's easy to learn, to pick up, right? And it's pretty cheap for, you know, YMCAs and WCAs and summer camps to put a table tennis, you know, table down, a few paddles, and have people just go at it. It's that that makes it, Better than most sports games, I think, the type of thing you can translate to VR. So, no release date, no price, just a polished looking video. Next up, Samsung, and this one flew under my radar. There was an event called Mobile World Congress in Shanghai, China last week, where Samsung unveiled this standalone HMD. The coolest thing for me personally is the processor because it's ARM-based. Yes, ARM processor. There once upon a time was a computer called the Acorn Archimedes that had arguably the best version of the first Elite game. It was great. Gorot shaded polygons. Just, it looked fantastic. It was fast, sleek, better than the Atari ST and the Amiga version of it. It was a stunner, right? Interesting to see what ARM is going to be able to pull off for a standalone VR. It's a dual 2.5 gigahertz ARM powering this thing. Two resolutions, 4K at 75 frames per second that I think is going to be limited to media stuff, right? Netflix, etc. And then a WQHD resolution at 90 frames per second. Now, they talk about this thing being eye-tracking capable, but I haven't seen proof of that. Other than an alignment and partnership with another Korean company called Visual Camp, which is supposedly implementing the eye-tracking, haven't seen that. What I can say is there are front-facing cameras on the outside, the exterior of the HMD, to likely facilitate inside-out tracking. The rest of it, we'll have to wait and see. Next news story, Oculus finally adding support for native mixed reality capture. This is a really cool feature on the Vive and what it does is it allows you to make a gameplay video where the creator looks like they're actually in the game. Typically done with a third controller, so like a Vive controller. Oculus, same thing. You'll use a 
touch controller, you've got to mount that and a camera and you'll be able to create the same effect. Still something I'm entertaining, but I've got room for improvement on other things game related before I entertain that. But uh, yeah, there's a few examples about, of that out there. I will try to include those in the description below. Then the next story, Payday 2 game publisher Starbreeze. We've heard kind of less about their game and more about the HMD. They were supposed to have this partnership and they still do according to them with IMAX, but IMAX seems to be using other vendors, HMDs. I was surprised that didn't come up in the interview, but the rest of it, interesting interview, Venture Beat, uh, specifically Dean Takahashi has with Starbreeze's CTO, Emmanuel Marquez. The second part of this story is an acquisition. So I just bundled those together. Starbreeze acquired a fellow Swedish company called Enterspace. And these guys are working on larger scale and multi-user interactive VR. So a perfect fit for kind of their plans and where they want to go. Uh, so it was a cash payment, apparently 3 million Swedish krona and a bunch of other stuff, B shares. So that came about at the end of their uh, B series funding. So hopefully that takes them in the direction. I think still think it's pretty bold. And just to sell the interview a little bit more for you to go and read it is how far they're kind of moving away from what made them a company in the first place. And that's games. Yes, they're making games kind of for the VR arcade, but to kind of plunge into hardware, you know, that, that definitely, uh, that takes something, right? And lots of companies, they're adverse to that type of risk. And for these guys to jump in, anyways, I don't want to spoil the interview, but if that's of interest, go check it out again, link below. All right, next story. Microsoft's controllers. Now we saw this thing and a lot of us assumed it was going to be something that they sell that you can use with third-party mixed reality HMDs like Acer's, Lenovo's. Apparently not the case. This according to Nadia, who's the uh, principal program manager of the Windows Devices Group. Specifically, here's what she had to say on it. The motion controller is a reference design. I think this is an important distinction. It is not a product that is branded Microsoft. It's available to each of our Windows Mixed Reality partners to offer with their bundle. So won't be Microsoft branded, will be available for Acer, Lenovo, and the rest of them to include in their bundle. Now, what was interesting too here, at the end of it, the article says it should mirror the functionality of both the touch controllers and the Vive wands. But there was one comment, because I thought there was something that just sounded strange about that. There's one lone comment and they point out that the controllers only function that way when they have line of sight. If there is anything in between, it won't work like a touch or Vive controller. So looking into kind of fleshing that out as a certainty because that is an important distinction. Uh, if that is true, yeah, it'll be <laughs> leagues of difference between it and Touch and Vive because they work on the external cameras and sensors, not reliance on the HMD necessarily, right? In other words, they're tracked even if you're not looking at them. So if I can substantiate that, I will do an update. And this last story, guys, before we bring Monday to a close, Acer's mixed reality headset was shown in a recent video at an event to work side by side with the HoloLens from Microsoft. It's kind of cool. What they did is they've got a video and it's basically just a oversimplified escape room puzzle, right? There's an island. At the heart of the island is a shuttle. So you've got one person using the Acer HMD. They get the VR view. They see the gangplank leading to the building on the island where the shuttle is sitting. The other person gets the 30,000 foot view via the HoloLens. 
they see the island at a distance, not satellite view, but kind of like plane height, right? Airplane height. They can manipulate that island, put it on a pedestal. In fact, that's what they do on the video. They put it on a table on stage, but they're responsible for guiding the VR person to the shuttle and reading the rules and the instructions. Yes, it was primitive. Yes, the dialogue between the two heavily scripted and cheesy as hell, but I think they made their point that there's all kinds of room for crossing over between the devices. They can pull that off. There's a lot of assumptions here, right? They sell enough HoloLenses. They sell enough HMDs. There's enough out there to make it worthwhile in the first place. All of that kind of has to happen. If it does, crossover stuff like this could potentially be really freaking cool. Tabletop stuff, D&D, &D, there's all kinds of potential here. So very cool. And that is it for the news. Guys, have a fantastic whatever's left of your Monday. Let's get that weekend here before we know it. As always, cheers.